This podcast is sponsored by Manscaped. When manscaping, you got to use the right tools for the job. And trust me, your balls will thank you. Manscaped was kind enough to send me their lawnmower 4.0. And trust me, this thing is a lifesaver. The lawnmower 4.0 is great because it is nick safe and you can take it in the shower for all your manscaping duties. As well as these ball toner and ball deodorant, these things are amazing. Make sure you guys go to manscaped.com, use code TEXTVRES, that's 20% off your purchase. Your balls will thank you. Welcome back to the podcast. Um, this one is a, is a, a version 2. Uh, we have the man Gutsy A. Yeah. A lot has changed. A lot has changed, and I do want to talk about what has changed because a lot has changed for me. Because when yeah, yeah. when we spoke, I mean, you were talking, you were talking to someone. I mean, I had been creating content for a long time, but mm. um, I wasn't. I didn't see any success. I I think I had three thousand followers, and yeah, uh, back then you had I think yeah around two to three k, and I think I was like from the recording that I listened to. I, I had said that I was at 190k, so okay. I've jumped over almost 200k since then. Um, wow. So I mean that's that's still crazy to think about. Yeah. Um, you know, like I think a lot of people get s stuck up in the in the day to day successes because I, even I do this where you know like I think I'm not growing or you know I'm not doing the best I can do or you know and. And I, I definitely, I definitely think that you know I could see more success day to day, but I feel like a lot of times we don't take that step back and look at our 90 day or mm -hmm. our or our 180 day yeah. like success, right? Because like if you think about it in the long term, like I, I feel like I've successed way more than I've lost. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um. But for you, that's that's awesome to, to see. You you've done some crazy podcasts, like with Ten. I saw, and a lot of the uh, Valorant actors. You've been really in, active in the Valorant space. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's really cool, man. That's that's awesome. Yeah, I I definitely think that. Like, I mean, at least recently, we both got added. I, I mean, I don't think it's like that much of a secret, but we both got added to uh, like a Valorant creators Discord. Yeah, and yeah. with for me at least like for being I, I still think of myself as a small creator and obviously not huge but that was that was a w in my book because like people thought of me as a valorant creator in some sort of fashion um mm -hmm. and i i just felt good and then obviously i gotta talk with a lot of cool creators and i just think that's pretty cool yeah that that's that's a cool thing i mean the the discord is good um it's it's nice to just have other creators to talk to because I feel like right now it's not about gaming, it's not about Valorant, it's not about um, you know just everything. Like I feel like it's just not about gaming as much anymore. Um, like back then when we when we were creating content last year, it was super game based. You know, Cold War. We know like zombies. We know like Valorant. Like. We knew it was super game based. Like that's how you grew. And mm -hmm. like now everyone's going back to school. Gaming's not as um as loved as it was before. Um, you know, modern war the new COD has actually brought back a lot of uh good gaming things for a lot of people. Um but I feel like with Twitch growth, like the number one way now is is streaming with other people. And and I think like sticking together is the most important thing making content together with other creators um you know making different videos off of each other um on tiktok and spe especially if you look at like logan and you look at like john and joshy you look at like how their content goes a lot of it is based off of like them playing with each other and mm -hmm. so a lot of people get to know everyone in the circle so i definitely think that growing with people is the way to grow nowadays than it was back then like back then you could make 50 tech videos and have 500 viewers on twitch you know what i mean whereas now it's like you've got to like really interact with people in your community talk to them get to know people there's just a lot you know yeah but it, it does it makes a lot of sense because like why wouldn't you want to see like you know your favorite two creators play together and then like that's exactly. it's so it's it like it, it works for me too 
even being a creator like seeing two people that i love like their content and then being together it's like wow they even know each other but it's like of course like everyone knows everyone in their little space like mm -hmm. but it it does something for the viewer um that is very cool and i, I think that's I, that's what i've been trying to do like because <clears throat> obviously i'm gonna keep making the podcast but i can't make a podcast every day and sometimes oh, it, yeah, no. like right now like it's dry when i when i have two people like i have one guest who's you know recording an album right now so it's like it's hard to even get them on here and then i have another one who vanguard just came out so they're you know hosting tournaments and like doing so much stuff so and it's not their fault that they're busy but then it's like those were my two guests so now like i'm sitting here like i i don't have anything so my thing is like with i wanted to make some content with uh paper bag and jared and you know make some actual vow content because you know that's three people who potentially could you know bring in audiences and just collab with more creators mm -hmm. so i think it's super important to not only expand on the content but also collab with more people and uh just get those you know reps in of of different videos and stuff like that yeah agreed i mean that's just how it is i think a lot of times people get kind of caught up in um in their own world that they don't collab enough mm -hmm. and he, and i'm even guilty of it like i i go on valor and i solo queue pretty much every day so like for me like if i were to go and like ask cam or like you know and a lot of it comes down to me just not being good enough to play with these people <laughs> um but you know i'm saying in general like I could easily go and say, hey, like, let's do this, you know, or, you know, it, it, there's definitely days that I could have done like customs or, or stuff like that. And sometimes I just don't feel like it, you know, but mm -hmm. there, but like the whole, the whole premise of growing on Twitch is being collabing with these people, collabing with Mew, collabing with, you know, Logan and collabing with these people that, you know, already are good for everyone. And I think right now for smaller creators on Twitch, it's just like, we're all in this limbo of either Twitch is going to make or break or we're switching to YouTube. And it's in a really weird spot because before we could really, we could really like do well. Like we could really, like we could live off of Twitch by itself. And I'm blessed that I have the mousepad business um, because I'd be really struggling on Twitch <laughs> um, when it comes to like money and whatever mm -hmm. right so i mean i've seen it after i moved i took a little bit of time off and i took like maybe two weeks to fully move my room and build this whole room and i mean and still building it but i was still posting daily on tiktok but like still like that hurt my twitch account so much like it literally like if you don't stream every day or every other day like people forget and it's crazy how like how much it affects your numbers you mm -hmm. know what i mean it, like literally i went from being like almost a 200 viewer streamer to like now 50 to 60 you know and that's yeah that that really hurt the the um analytics right it's gonna make it look everything worse um but you know we still have the same mouse pad orders a day you know they dropped a little bit but you know they're gonna go back up with uh holiday season and mm -hmm. um things like that uh, but it's crazy that literally like how much you have to be foot on the gas every day you mm -hmm. know what i mean yeah like, it, it's crazy how how much you have to be like uh, you have to be doing every single thing every single day and mm -hmm. a year later i've definitely realized it you know um it's definitely weighed on me more um as i've become more of a creator or a streamer right um since since i moved like it's a whole different like ball game like for me like once i moved and i moved into this house i mean don't get me wrong i love the place i live now but it's really changed like ev how i think about everything like before i used to think about like what's my next video and now it's like how do i make my next dollar right and i guess that made it a little bit hard for me to be like you know Oh, I could be focusing on other things to make me more money than streaming. 
um, right now because like you know streaming is being is slower than normal and you know I could hey stream two hours instead of four and maybe you know make more videos but then I find myself less creative so there's like a it's like a weird cycle that you always have to think about when you get to this point where I'm at where you know my my next meal relies on my next five subs and it's just a weird comparison mm -hmm. and um and that is a really really hard thing to stomach um and if i didn't have the mouse pack company i i'd probably be struggling mm -hmm. um um so for my recommendations for twitch streamers now build something that will bring you another revenue stream because twitch streaming is so unpredictable because yeah. today i could i could kick on the stream today and some kid could come in with 100 gifted and mm -hmm. i i have no idea of telling when that 100 gift is going to come you know what yeah I mean? Or, or if it's gonna come like I, or if it is gonna yeah, come, yeah. I, I definitely I've definitely relied on uh, Twitch like too much at a, at a point um, yeah when it comes to revenue and I I never like I just had like a constant a hundred you know a hundred subs or something I mean obviously it's not enough to live off of but it's like this it's a good it's a good part-time yeah income yeah, yeah like i agree like and i i mean right now i'm at like almost 300 subs but like i used to be at like almost 2000 you know what i mean so mm -hmm. i definitely was at a different point in my career back then and um i don't know what may like this is the thing that's hard too once i moved i'm in a whole different space people don't recognize the whole room again um it is a completely different um metric like it's a completely different space a different like a different vibe to the stream there's different like games now and back then when i was like really peaking and popping off like i didn't hold the momentum that i should have and um and it, it definitely it definitely hurt and a little bit because like now i'm seeing like you know really really harsh numbers on views and like and i think that's for everyone though that's that's not just me but mm -hmm. um but I definitely see how, like, you know, I don't, I, I haven't had a 100k view video in a while. And so there are, like, those, like, big things where, you know, you don't know what's next. And, I, I like, I started off as a tech creator that made mouse pads and streamed. And now I feel like I want to be more of a streamer, but I don't really care for the tech stuff as much because I have everything. You know what I mean? And, it, and um, there is a specialty to not having everything because mm -hmm. now i feel like when you get to the end of gta and you have all the money and everything in the game and you don't have any more to give that's what i feel like because i feel like i've already done everything i could do maybe not streaming wise but tech wise like i feel like i've done everything and yeah i can improve but i feel like i've done a majority of what i've done you know what i mean and there's not like I can't go buy this extra part that will make me more money. You know what I mean? And I, I, I don't know. I, that's a, it's a weird, it's a weird dynamic. Um, and I just feel like I've got to the, to the end of the tech era for me. And I want to get to that next like streaming stuff. Like, I feel like I'm better as a streamer anyway. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, as much as I know that the tech videos do views and they get me views and they bring in views for me, they don't i don't want it to be only about me like i don't i, I don't want it to be a, mainly about tech right i don't i don't want it to be about products and and whatever and whatever um but yeah that, that's kind of where i've been at mentally like i i think i can grow i just don't know what my next goal is like do i focus valorant you know or do i kind of become a variety streamer which i think i can do okay i just have to make more content um and it's it's a weird it's a weird take it's definitely a weird uh uh move for 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 my step i guess you know yeah i think i think the main thing when it comes to and and you can and chime in on this but like when picking your niche and i think you did i think you did a pretty great job and one of the very few of not getting so 
deep oh. not getting so deep into a niche um and kind of not being able to pivot out of it because i feel like a lot of people uh like they try to build this audience or they dig themselves a hole on a specific maybe it's you know product reviews or um i've seen some like wallpaper videos and like just different things that would be so specific to them and then they build up this audience and then they're not able to pivot to anything because their audience only expects product reviews or just certain things like that and like they dug themselves a hole and they can't get out of it because now they're trying to do you know streaming content or you know something different gaming content and they can't they can't do it because they're just in this hole because everyone just wants to see a product review yeah um that's where i felt i was at <laughs> um because you know like for me like i did room hacks and setup hacks and then i moved from that to more streaming content and i mean i've posted enough streaming content where people um probably would would know me from uh -huh. um but whenever every time when someone comes into the stream it's it's about the mouse pad right like people still recognize me as the mouse pad guy and um that is I, it's not a bad thing because i like the recognition my brand gets mm -hmm. um <clears throat> but it's hard because I, I don't know what direction to take that because like for me like i thought people would recognize me as like just gutsy aiden but people recognize me as mousepad guy that makes mousepads like they don't recognize me as who i think i would be recognized as mm -hmm. um and finding my target audience is still kind of really hard because like when i think of my audience i think maybe 15 to 20 you know yeah. a lot of them a lot of them are either building their setup budgeting their setup or buying a mouse pad and some of them like gaming some of them just use productivity mm -hmm. and so that's the way i think of my audience but that could be totally wrong like i could i could be totally off on that you know um a lot of my audience kind of res resonated with old me because old me um was less worried about the assets that he's built i guess and now it's hard for me to be like old me because if i say something that you know might offend someone or um or do some weird content that someone thinks is cringe and then you know you've got like that that dynamic with your fans again um but back then like i made really cringy content but it worked you know what I mean? Like it, it worked, and I, back then I didn't think it was cringe. I thought it was a good idea, um, and I don't know now. Like, what the next trend? Like, what can I ride? What can I do? Like, you know what I mean? It's just kind of a weird, like, dark area for me. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, like, what the biggest step for me is. And everyone always asks me, like, when they come to the stream, like, oh, like you know, what are you going to do next for your next YouTube video? Or like, you know, what, what's your plan? And so to me, I, a lot of times I answer that is just, you'll wait and see, and, you know, and I never really give out like what I'm going to do or like what I'm going to say, because it, a lot of times I don't even know myself, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. Well. Like, you know, I have that idea over there, but you know, there's, um, there's just a weird, like not knowingness right now. Like, um, like you know should i continue streaming should i you know can i can i keep making content um and it's just i think i'm just waiting for that golden ticket again and because like a lot of times a lot of creators wait for their golden ticket which is like their viral video again um and i just don't know which one it is you know um because like for me at first it was room hacks and then it moved from that to being like the package video and then it was like the um the next video was the mouse pad video that blew up and really helped my business um so i don't know I, to me i don't know what the next big step is right like i i could totally just like develop fully into streaming but i feel like i still need to mix tech in there to keep the people that are already there you know what i mean yeah um so i, I don't know what, what do you like when you've talked to other content creators like and their vision what do they say like whenever you ask them 
like what their vision is or what's their plans and stuff like that i i think a lot of people i think a lot of people are in the same boat as you i don't i don't know what i'm gonna do next i have no idea um yeah but i'm not necessarily worried about it because i i can't really put that energy to to something like i i'm so like new at actually having things get watched at all that yeah. like when i when we spoke last my goal was to get one follower a day that was my goal on tiktok i said if yeah. i can get one follower a day then i'll i'll hit f like three thousand or four thousand like soon yeah but now you know on a bad day i i gain you know a hundred followers yeah yeah so <clears throat> like i just think not necessarily like you can think about it and and you do, definitely don't have to take the advice from me but you can think about what you're gonna do next but i i don't think you should dread on what you're gonna do next because you also have to realize you're gutsy aiden like i'm not gutsy aiden no one else is gutsy aiden you're gutsy That's aiden true. So there's no one else who can make Gutsy Aiden content. Like, they can try. And there's a lot of people who probably have and will do. They'll try to make the mouse pad, the swirly mouse pad. <laughs> yeah, or, yeah. or, you know, like, things like that. But no one else... Like, they're gonna, they're gonna send it from... What is it? Stream Elements or something? Like, yeah. <laughs> that ain't your quality no more. Yeah, um, yeah. But there's also things that... Like, I just, I think that really what you should hone in on what I would want to see is literally just collabs. Just those short little videos on Valorant, like the pre-round talks or something. Just, like, things like that people are going to love. And yeah. I think that mm. a lot of creators, um, like the big ones, like the really top of the line, I don't think they really worry about what they're going to do, you know? they don't really have to yeah. think about it like they get thrown stuff all the time like here's an ad or here's a game to play or like um yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but they also don't have to worry about like like really like they don't make their tiktoks like i asked tens and kai day and i was like do you guys make your tiktoks and they're like no we don't post them that we approve the clip before they're edited and we'll approve it after and then but like me and you we're sitting here i assume you still edit your tiktoks uh a majority of them yeah like if it's like a sponsored post i will um if it's like like say you know like rocat reach out to me i'm gonna make that video there's no one else that can edit that like yeah. like how i need to think about it like that right mm -hmm. um but if it's like a, a stream clip most of the time i don't um i yeah. give a vision i give a vision for the stream clip and what i think would be good and then i let my editor kind of mm -hmm. go with it um if if they i mean honestly youtube shorts has been way more helpful than um than than my actual tiktok account recently because my my tiktok my youtube shorts I, I i've been posting only gaming clips and it has been popping off like i don't know what it is with gaming clips now but i feel like if you have a youtube shorts every single day at one specific time and they're all around the similar niche like gaming um like if you um, if you post like one streaming clip and it's like from warzone and like valorant like they both pop off and it's really weird it's just like mm -hmm. every time i post like it does really well yeah um consistently and so with with me i think about like okay could i if i spent an hour on a TikTok, could i have spent that on a youtube video that probably would have gained more return for me and a lot of times the answer is probably yes, but TikTok is like still my home, right? And the most followers I have on there, you know, I obviously want to do more on YouTube, but I want to get to a point where I'm more like a Ludwig. Like I want to be more, um, I make all of my videos on stream at one time and I have my editor say, cause I could totally do that. It's just coming up with the series ideas Mm -hmm. um like right now like the best series that i've come up with is rack reacting to setups on stream and that video like those videos do really well every time they bang every time for me on youtube and um 
you know that that i want to get into like reacting to like tiktoks and like reacting to stuff and then also i want to throw in like gameplay and stuff like that like kind of how ludwig does but he does it subtly like he does it like um i don't really know the best way to describe how ludwig makes his content but i think he comes up with an idea and then he reaches out to other people and then he can collabs the idea and so like yeah it's just it's just weird the videos are like interesting like i would love to make youtube videos like that i just don't know like what series to make you mm -hmm. know what i mean um but every time i post a setup on youtube it does really well um every time i make like a film video it does really well um now it's just getting to the streaming videos like can i make like can i make on live content that goes to youtube and um the answer to that is probably yes but i just don't know like what to make of them like because my main channel like if i go and post like a, a stream highlights right it's not gonna work like a like a tens account where you know where he already has already built everything and he is really well known for valorant whereas me i'm not really well known for really anything but the setup and the mouse pads right so mm -hmm. If I keep making setup videos and they keep going well, then it's like, yeah, I'm growing the YouTube cha channel, but I'm not really growing it for what I want it to. Um, so there, there's that. There's just that idea for me. Um, so that's kind of how I look at it. And I, I just don't know what my direction is. Like, and maybe it's because I'm so wrapped up in the mousepad business that I don't really realize that I could really make it as an entertainer. Um, and so I don't know. I don't know what it is, really. You know? Yeah. Um, I I understand like like the thought process and stuff. Cause I, I mean, even I've wanted to make videos like that. I've even tried to make videos like that. I'm pretty sure there's a couple of videos on my YouTube channel. But I think you shouldn't doubt yourself for a second, and you should just really like experiment uh with how you would do that and how it would be received and yeah um just kind of go all out there with with how just figure out how to do it when it comes to like don't i feel like a lot of people wait for something to be perfect like they always say yeah I don't, I've heard it so many times like I'm waiting till this happens so then I can do this like I feel like people should just do, like do and then kind of figure out later on whatever like how to actually perfect it because you know, the first time you posted a tic tac I'm sure that right now if you went and looked back at it you wouldn't be like wow that was so good like, no no for me yeah, yeah. I mean, but you posted and then you figured out after how to do it. That's just, that's how everyone who is good at, good at it now figured out how to do it. You know, mm -hmm. like nothing you do for the first time you're ever going to be good at. And I told my sister that so many times, cause I want her to start a TikTok. She's like, my first video is going to be bad. I'm like, everyone's first video is going to be bad. But if you just, yeah. And I think, I think, uh, that's, that's what what i like i struggle with is because sometimes i get worried about if i post this like is it going to be perceived wrong is it going to be is some person going to look at this and say is it cringe or whatever instead of thinking that i should just post every time and it maybe maybe that's like the goal is just post without thinking and um you know and obviously there's going to be posts that you just think about you know you can have yeah. to plan out or whatever but I definitely think that that's a better mindset. It's just been it's been weird because ever since I moved, like my mind has been really different. Like because you know for me now, like it's it's no different than it was at the house. Like I'm alone every day anyway, right? Like when it comes to, I was really dark, but I meant like you know like <laughs> no, you're, you're alone in your room like editing or thinking of ideas or taking pictures of stuff. I just like those things are already kind of the same idea. This is the same idea now. I just have more responsibilities because now I'm on my own, right? And so that added, like, a layer of, like, you know, shit, I really am on my own. Like, this laundry didn't, you know, get switched over by accident. It's, it's just, like, those things always come up. And it's almost, like, inconvenience 
like like every single thing in life is like an inconvenience for me like <laughs> instead of it being like a good thing like oh i should have done laundry today or it's like it's like damn it i, I could have edited a video instead you know what i mean and so it's just to me that's like really incon inconvenient you know um and so like life things like are just way more inconvenient than they were before so like now like oh these boxes didn't get broken down so now i have to break them down like and i get products all the time so it's like i've got like a big ass box pile and i'm like damn i gotta take this you know it's just like one of those things like every day i'm just like that you know what i mean mm -hmm. um but you know again like planning out content like i try to set aside time to like research like you know like researching what videos i could make within my niche that will work um you know a lot of times i look at valorant videos sometimes i look at like other games like drive like right now driving wheels Mm -hmm. I've been really big on YouTube and on on TikTok. Like XQC started doing it, a lot of other streamers started doing it. So I thought, you know, like if I'm already get, I didn't really buy that for that reason. It just kind of happened. Um, but I have the content now cuz I've crashed a couple times and it was funny. So like that is a good TikTok. Um and just just those ideas are what I'm talking about. But now how could I make that driving video like like a content piece for YouTube mm -hmm. you know what I mean that is where I struggle with is if I post a Forza driving video with my chat and funny moments from it how do I title that you know what I mean like you know what I mean like it's it's just that idea or premise is what I'm trying to think of and a lot of times it's it's harder than than just thinking of like post this on YouTube you know and not care because a lot of times it comes down to your title and thumbnail and thinking about like what you could title it is the hardest part Mm -hmm. um so that's where i that's where i what i do a lot of times is is i i struggle with titling and thumbnailing things because yeah it's like one of the hardest pieces of your content if, if it's not clickable and it's not a good title then you're not going to get viewers and that's just how it is um and you know thinking like i've always thought about like do i get a mentor like you know do i think about like because youtube is 99 percent skill and one percent luck and um youtube is all based on search engine optimization it's all based on how you keep your retention it's all based on um you know on those metrics um to grow like you really have to think about like your your seo purposes and like what you what you really want to grow with right and um a lot of times people do get caught up in numbers with that like with a uh, like an example is like you know if you like mr beast is an example like he'll go in and look at his analytics and know exactly what's wrong and how to fix it and what video how it's fixed etc mm -hmm. and so that is like one of the biggest things like that people don't do is they don't look at their numbers because they're scared of them um but not how to fix them so like for me like i don't know for tiktok i don't know the algorithm well enough to be like I know what to exactly fix from this last video and why it did bad. It could have just been the idea. You know what I mean? It doesn't even need to be the metrics on that. A lot of times, good ideas on TikTok do better than the actual execution of the video. Yeah. Um, I so. I did want to say uh, I do have an interesting story when you said SEO optim like the search engine optimization. Uh, yeah. I I when I was. I had a little spurt where I was like vlogging a lot and um yeah I was reaching out to other creators and this creator that I reached out to he had 3,000 subscribers I had around 3,000 subscribers I think I'm still at yeah. 3,000 subscribers by the way this was about two years ago um yeah and I reached out to him and I said I went back or no I had I had about 1.5 or 1.5k and i said hey i'm a fellow youtuber i love to find smaller channels if you want to chat about some stuff let me, just let me know and then so we chat uh we started jamming back on instagram and he was like hey if you want a video chat um and he said seo optim or he said search engine op optimization look it up i'm gonna send you an article you read all about it and you you gotta get this down man you gotta get this down and I was like, what is this, like, what is this guy talking about? And 
he the next day he had a video go viral uh on youtube and i was like wow like what what is is this guy like paying for some like views or anything or just like i was so mind yeah. blown and then this guy just starts blowing up his name's Elliot Choi. I don't know if you've ever seen him oh, on YouTube. Uh, yeah, I know Elliot Choi. Yeah, 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 yeah. I met him at 3,000 subscribers. We did a like a face video chat on. He was in his uh, dorm room at Vanderbilt, and That's I was crazy. I was. I love Elliot Choi. I was. I was sitting there talking to this guy, and he was like, "SEO. That's what you gotta get down." He was like, "It's thumbnails. It's it's titles." It's just everything and just research it and that's the key to YouTube. And he said this back November 27th, 2018. So it's about been about uh about three crazy. years. Yeah. He said Have you search, thought about bringing him on here? I, I've wanted to, yeah. But I mean yeah. we haven't we obviously haven't spoken in a while, but uh and he's almost at a million subscribers now on YouTube. So Yeah, um, yeah and and a lot of times his is just vlogging mm -hmm. but knowing what to search engine right and and that that is what like like casey nine sets popular for that idea because yeah he made really good vlogs but he had really good search engine optimization and that's how he really really pushed his videos mm -hmm. and and like for me a lot of my views come from the gaming setup niche okay I, like on YouTube, like someone looked up gaming setup inspiration or gaming setups. Mine is like fifth or sixth. And so that helping me, like that really helped me grow like the main channel. Like I'm only at like 5,000 subscribers maybe on YouTube. Um, I think it's like five point something, but um, like a lot of my YouTube videos come from searching videos like searching like searching mm -hmm. re setups searching gutsy aiden searching um um you know reacting to setups that's a big one um and sometimes you know like some videos will do better than others like one like one video did fifty three thousand, and that was um was my setup video from last year it just kept going and so that video really really did well and i think it's because it was more in my style but it also was because um, the search engine optimization, uh, optimization on gaming setups, like that that niche gaming setups, everybody watches, bro. Everybody watches it, and mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what niche you're in. You could be trying to build a, a setup from home as a 30 year old man, and you want something really really cool. You're gonna look up gaming setup or gaming room or inspiration for work office. And anyone with a productivity setup is gonna come up. Like, that is the banging part of YouTube. Like, like, I, I guarantee you that's why Logan has been blowing up a lot more. It's because his video on his gaming setup recently um, did 140k in like the first three days, and because it's because of his style, his title, title thumbnail, and his search engine optimization. It's just how it is, mm -hmm. you know and and i guarantee you that's due to a lot of his his youtube videos is his setups and and that's totally fine because logan has a style that way um but for me that 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 search engine optimization that just means i need just to make more like setup videos but i'm just not happy with making setup videos all the time like i just i mean i would love to make setup videos don't get me wrong but making them all the time just gets very tiring like I would I would much rather make maybe five setups videos a month and the rest of my videos are stream content um, or or other things like that because at some point someone's gonna get tired of the setup and not want to watch it again um, and so like it's just a, it's a hard um, pill to swallow like you just have to think about what it is and I don't know you know yeah, I just I don't I don't think you force yourself to do anything you don't feel a hundred percent about. Like, I mean, I have I kick myself a lot because my main thing is like I wanna I wanna be the guy I wanna I wanna pump out content like a content machine and just not even look at it. So, but a lot of things get to me because like I'll 
I'll say no to people who come on to come on the podcast. I feel I feel like it's a weird thing with my my thing with my brain when people like ask me to come on. It's like uh, there I say I kind of say no to a hundred percent of people who ask me to come on um, because yeah I I just feel like like people want something and I know we talked about this in in your Twitch chat but like I don't. I can't I can't do the the wanting something from me. I just like Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um the way I have some advice on this because over last year when we talked, we actually brought the same topic up of not knowing what someone wants from you. Do they want money? Do they want fame? Do they want um a platform to talk about something? And um for me, the way I've kind of looked at this is if someone wants to make a mouse pad with me, like I just have requirements, like, you know what I mean? Like they have to have some sort of established brand. They have to be pulling out a good amount of views to, to promote their product. And, and I don't care. I mean, I don't care if they're not averaging daily views every, all the time, but if they make a dope product and people like it, it's bound to go viral no matter what the product is. Right. Mm-hmm. And, um, like an example is like when I worked with Logan, I, I just worked with him because I like him and I think he's he's got a really good brand on his head and and I think he has a really good design aspect when it comes to designing things or designing rooms or things like that and a lot of people follow him for that so when I thought of a product that he could make a mouse pad came to mind because for one it's the one thing that ties so many setups together but people always forget about it mm-hmm. if you think about like a setup the last thing you think about it is a mouse pad but the first thing you should think about is one and it's and it's really weird like that 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 dynamic like that's why i made mouses mouse pads because it's like the one thing that everyone overlooks yeah in a setup and with logan like our work is so easy i say hey logan do you want to do you want to make another mouse pad in a different colorway what 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 setup are you working toward what color scheme you're looking working for and we just came up with like topo low and that was a banger product everyone loved that you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And 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 that is like one of the biggest things with Logan is like you could make anything and he is so marketable that like you could make a f- I don't know, you could make a damn shoe after him and people would buy it. Like it's just one of those things where people um will buy it because it's Logan's. And um and he's created that through his videos and um he's definitely changed a lot since I last like really really like since I sat down with him and, and talked about his future and just, we just talked about both of our futures and like, what do we see in the future? And like, um, when I was in Vegas, I went to Vegas and visited him. Um, I think it was like last month and it was a couple of days before my birthday, but we, we went out there and then we hung out with them and I was talking to Logan the last day before I was leaving, you know, and I was just talking to him about like, you know, the future of, of content creation with him and with me and like, you know, what what he has to offer and i just told him you know i was just telling him like you know i know it may become it may come off weird to me or from me but like you are the most marketable person that i know like you could market anything and people would buy it because it's yours and um he just basically kind of stepped back and like kind of looked at that and like thought about it and he was just telling me like you know like i i don't even see myself as that like i just i just make the videos that i want to make Mm -hmm. and to me that was really inspiring that he doesn't even get it like he doesn't he doesn't get you know he doesn't he doesn't think about it that way he just thinks about him making what's my next video and how can i make it i think it'd be cool to do this and that is something that i've lost during during making money and and starting the business and i've kind of lost that a little bit because like with me like i i love making videos but it has to be the video that I want to make. <laughs> you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. and a lot of times I have to make videos that I don't want to make. And that is the hardest part to swallow. Like as a content creator, like sometimes you know, oh, I'd really be inspired to make this, but I know it won't make views. You know what I mean? But a lot of times I just post it anyway, um, even though it does bad, but it's just one of those things that I like to make. Yeah, I think you you have to do that. There's a, there's a lot of videos that I make that you know people wouldn't deem successful but i i genuinely think that like that's the stuff that makes me happy and like 
if I could, if, if a year ago I could pull, you know, 500 likes on a TikTok, I know that I would have absolutely shit my pants. So like, I'm yeah. not going to, I'm not going to take that away from myself just because I have a video, you know, with 200,000 likes or like other videos that have a hundred thousand likes. I'm not going to take that away from myself mm. because it's, it's also like people think on TikTok that every second a creator is creating to go viral and it's like in in the back of your mind yeah that might be something where you're you're heading in in content but like on youtube like you a lot of people create for their fans they they put out a video and it will do good or do bad but like it's not as stigmatized as on TikTok if you don't go viral. Like on YouTube, you kind of have this steady growth. Like people see your videos, you have recommended and stuff like that. But TikTok, like I feel like people create sometimes for the wrong reason, and that's why they get down on themselves. Yeah. Uh, I definitely agree with that. I think people get kind of caught up in views and, uh, um, you know, they just get down on themselves. They just like, and I, and I'm totally guilty of this. Don't get me wrong. I'm not calling out anyone in specific. Yeah, I, no, I get you know, that. I, I am, I'm very guilty of this. I mean, I, I look at my numbers and I say, damn, I've been down on views. Like, you know, what video could I make to bring those views back up? And, um, that is the wrong mindset but it also is a good mindset it means that you know it's a wrong mindset in the in the mind of only being only wanting views um but it's a good mindset because y you think about how could you improve and and that that is one of the the greatest things that i did is before i would just post a video and post it and now i think about every single one that i post critically and and that's maybe why i've slowed down uploads but i think it's better to be a quantity person than to be a quality person sometimes and um yeah the quality videos they got to be quality sometimes but not every time and um a lot of times that's what slows me down <clears throat> it slows me down excuse me <clears throat> it slows me down a little bit that way because um because I think about like how could I make the best video that will do the best numbers and do the best likes and comments and it really shouldn't be about that mm -hmm. it really shouldn't be um, it, and if you, if you are doing that you're creating for the wrong reason and sometimes I do think I create for the wrong reasons um, but now I have no other option you know what I mean yeah um, you know I'm in my own house I had to pay my own rent and so making a video and getting views is part of my job you know what i mean yeah um and and that doesn't that's needless to say that i'm creating for the wrong reasons and i that i don't enjoy it because that's not the case i i would much rather be doing this job versus working at whole foods right i would much rather <laughs> be doing this mm -hmm. and that's that is definitely the um the mindset i have to, to take um but i think there's a point to a, every creator's career that's a breaking point um, where they get to like a pivotal moment in their career where they, they either drop views or drop numbers and they get really, really critical and hard on themselves. And I'm definitely in that zone. Like I'm really hard on myself. Every video, I feel like I'm just like posting and it's just not doing well every, every single one. And I, I get to a point where I'm just like, what is going to work? you know what i mean and um you know and it's bound to go up it's just when is the hardest part you know when am i going to get my next sub and when when am i going to be able to you know get back to normal on twitch and you know is it because i'm not posting enough on youtube and there's just so many questions that i always have mm -hmm. and and i'm thinking like maybe it's just because i'm not trying hard enough you know maybe maybe i've gotten more complacent since from when i started and um i don't know I, I don't know what it is uh i think i think it's maybe just more because i've gotten complacent um more comfortable now that i moved out and um 
definitely not the case. I mean, I, I should be more hard on myself, but you know how it is. Yeah. <laughs> Being your own boss is a little hard. Yeah, I mean, but... it's, it's, it's definitely hard to even... Like, finding a direction every day is hard. You don't have someone telling you what to do, where to put your time, where to... I'm sitting yeah. here, like, I can, you know... Like, I can go take a nap, but should I? No. I mean... Yeah, yeah. Like, like there's just... Uh, and especially, like, the the input to output sometimes isn't equal at all. It's just not. But then there's sometimes where you don't put any effort in and you and then it works out better and you think that's the way but i just i i mean you it's not usually the way uh you should like i mean i've done it i some of my the worst videos that i've ever put out in my opinion have you know done well but it's and like I, and i think i think it is because i listen to too many people mm -hmm. um like like getting to a point where i listen to so many different people tell me how i should run my career instead of just doing my own thing yeah and and i think that's what happened to me i listened i i'm kind of a yes man sometimes where i i'll you know if someone asks me to go lunch i'll be like all right i'll try to make it you know instead of me like all right i need to do this for myself i can't and that is what got me to where i am now where i'm confused on what i should do and because I, I wish I was older Aiden. Like, I wish I was, like, back when we last talked. I wish I was the same way. Um, but I, I'm i not the same way. <laughs> um, but I, I wish I was. And listening to my old self talk was way more inspiring than anyone else I've heard. Because it's about me, and it was me that said that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And the things that I said in that podcast, like, you know, it was inspiring to hear. And, and now I think listening to that podcast, I think like I should, uh, I should take more advice for myself, <laughs> you know? Um, and, and it was just interesting to hear myself talk that way. You know what I mean? Be so positive about TikTok and be so positive about my career. And now I've been so negative recently. So it's been good to hear some positive things. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes we get lost in the negative too much sometimes and i think a lot of people uh expect us to be these peop these perfect people all the time you know have a hundred percent energy on stream have a hundred percent energy in videos like you know what i mean yeah and it is it is hard it is hard to upkeep that um especially when you have like life issues or you're like struggling to like keep to find drive to keep making videos or content mm -hmm. it is hard it is really hard um to keep that you know what i mean yeah no i get you i think uh i'm just gonna i'm gonna leave i'm pretty sure i always say i'm pretty sure this is this is who said it to me but i'm i'm pretty sure phase blaze when we did the podcast last year uh, there's mm. there's moments where we talked um and just discords uh not on camera or anything we just talked um yeah and he told, I'm pretty sure it was him, but I'm pretty sure he told me that don't take advice from people that you wouldn't trade places with. And it's just like, it's kind of like, there's a lot of noise, but you got to kind of pick where you're hearing stuff from. And if you're going to take advice from uh, someone who, 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 you wouldn't trade places with because they they haven't done anything it's like you probably shouldn't because they don't they don't know the direction they don't know the direction that they're gonna go in nor do they know the direction that you should go in you know and i think it's it's really because there's a lot there you know there's comments every day there's there's so much stuff but you should really choose your battles and and focus on yourself and your content and where you want to go and, and and not really listen to other people and yeah, that, that's good that, advice yeah that just goes for everything and that is good advice yeah i i i think about it all the time when when it comes to 
to who's who has input and who has valuable input in my life is people mm -hmm. who are more successful than me yeah and I, I i definitely think like even me like i don't even think i'm the most successful person either like i i feel like i've just touched the tip of the iceberg like you know what i mean back then when we last talked we had sold maybe 2500 mouse pads i think at the time that we last talked we had no we did 1700 when we last talked mm -hmm. now we've we're at about 17,000 so for me like that whole year you know we've sold about 17,000 and that is a big number to think about right like 17,000 people have a mouse pad in their setup for me yeah I'm, and i don't know if you can yeah. see it back here yeah you've got one <laughs> you know that's the old style too those are the old old ones yeah. those are the ones before we upgraded quality too are they mm -hmm. do i gotta yeah, get I a, do i gotta get a new one dude sure <laughs> <laughs> yeah these ones are way thicker now and they they've got a lot of a lot better quality now those are the ones out of my garage back then um I'm surprised you got one of those. Those were sold out in 10 minutes. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even remember ordering it to be. I think I just went on. I was just watching your stream on the drop, dude. Dude, that's that's crazy because that was a uh, one of the very first pivotal moments in my career. Like, am I going to make it or am I not? I was and there, I remember, man. I remember. I was like, I remember um, when it first happened. I had spent so for September when they sold out. Um, I, I basically said to myself, like, you know, um, <laughs> well, I basically told myself that I could, um, that I could do it. And I basically, so I basically spent all my money in my bank account. I had like 10,000 saved up from, you know, working over the three years at different places. And I finally like had enough. And I was like, you know what? It's quarantine time. We're getting that extra 600 bucks a month on employment. And I just said, you know what? F this. I'm just going to, I'm just going to send it. And, um, I, I, I sent it. I mean, I didn't have anything left after. Um, I mean, I had like a dollar to my name and then we dropped them and they sold out. And I was like, I, I'm, I came up on like a cool, like 20 grand. And I was like, holy shit. <laughs> You know, I was gone in a day and I was just like, it was one of the most inspiring moments to me because, you know, I, I couldn't even, I couldn't even describe it. It mm -hmm. was just like, it was one of those things you just never can, can remake. Like, it's just one of those moments you never can, um, re redo or remake and start over. And it's just, it was crazy. And I remember my dad and I sitting there just like, you know, like it's crazy. Like there's no, there's no explanation for making 20 grand in a day. There's just no explanation for it. And, um, obviously, you know, that 20 grand is probably gone by now, you know, by upgrading shit. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people think that like, because I have the mouse side business, I shouldn't rely on Twitch too. And that, that, that is a hard stomach thing to take too, because I, I don't want people to associate the two. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because because the mouse pad stuff doesn't go toward my income. It goes toward yeah, it's income, but it goes toward like giveaways and like things for my audience and things like that, right? Um, it doesn't just go to me. Like people always like to think that I'm like ultra rich or whatever because I have a company. And part of that, part of that's slightly true, but I'm not really that rich. Like compared to other, uh, compared to my peers per se, I'm not as rich as them. Okay. And, like, um, I'm definitely nowhere near rich. If I was rich, dude, if I, if I was making way more than they think I make, I'd be making way more, okay? I mean, and, and these are the people that also, you know, I probably shouldn't listen to, but I'm just saying in general. A lot of people tell me that because, because of my Twitch, I should not ask for suds because I have the mousepad business. And... That's by far not the case. Um, Twitch streaming is a competitive job, and I, I would like to have a sub or two. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say no. 
and Twitch streaming wants to become the main career, not the business. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but to get to that point, I would have to use the mouse pad business to get to that point. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think a lot of people kind of just think that Twitch streamers are ultimately rich all the time. No matter if you've made it in your 100 viewers or you somewhat made it and you've got 50. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everyone always thinks that you're ultra rich if you have followers on Insta or Instagram or TikTok or YouTube. You're instantly rich. Yeah. And yeah, I'm I'm doing well for myself, but that doesn't mean that I haven't sacrificed my entire twenties almost. I mean, not all entire twenties. I have a good amount of years left, but the first teen years that I had into my twenties, grinding for this. It doesn't mean that I didn't give up everything. You know, I gave up a lot of shit to be where I'm at. Mm -hmm. And I don't think people are willing to get the risks that I took. Yeah, people take the risk. People yeah. are not are not willing to. You have to sacrifice. You have to sacrifice something. Is one part of your life or another? At some point, you're gonna have to sacrifice, and you're just gonna have to be okay with that decision. If you regret it, then then everything is like it's not gonna work because you're gonna just regret something that you did. I I mean, I feel like I've I sacrificed a lot by by doing what I did. And, uh, I mean, I'm not gonna go into it, but there's things that I that I sacrificed relationships 110% like like I I yeah I wasn't fit to do what I was doing when I was in a relationship and I I yeah. don't I definitely can't do it now I do, I do not have the time to you know separate but yeah yeah that's interesting I relationships do, are an interesting topic I do we'll want to ask um what if if you don't have to answer this but I'm going to ask you anyway okay what is questions. the what is the the most amount of money you've made in a month? Everything combined. <laughs> Everything combined. Um, if you yeah, could give this a rough estimate. Um. So in in December last year, I had a really big donator on Twitch, and I made 18k on Twitch. Um. And it was a. I mean, to be honest, it was 13k of the of the one person. And everything else was combined and that was just that was just gross with before twitch takes anything so i made it probably about nine grand from twitch um and then the mouse pad drop in december we did probably around 80k gross and then that split up between content creators and partly me and everything it was disgusting right that's, a disgusting amount that's um, so gross yeah, I mean, a lot of content creators got money for being a part of it. Um, a lot of it went out to giveaways. A lot of it went out, like, you know, I, I probably ended up profiting a good amount from that. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I put a lot of it back into myself. I, I went and hired people. I went and got a warehouse. We did a big partnership. You know, there a lot of that went into that. So I don't own that money now, but it was insane. Um, that was probably the most I've ever made, closer to 100k gross in one month, and that was probably the the closest I've ever been to like, what the fuck, like, and it and it wasn't even because of like, um, and it wasn't even because of like, uh, like me like saying like, oh I have this and you don't, you know what I mean? I I've I've been humble my entire life. Like growing up, I barely had shit, and you know as i got older my dad got you know more offers or jobs and did better and so but like growing up i had nothing like college i was super fucking broke and i mean i had a roof over my head but you everyone knows that if you have a roof over your head you're fine but like you just have the you're hungry like you want to be able to not have someone have a roof over your head for you yeah you know what i mean and a lot of a lot of it is just like you know like um it's just not even close to what to what i could have done and you know and i mean i only did three drops from september to october to december so it was like you know and yeah. obviously i don't make that now because it's it's nowhere near that <laughs> mm -hmm. if i did a drop and every time i did that i'd be fucking crazy rich but nowhere near that now um now i go off a of daily sales since we have like you know um everything like that we still average about 1000 a month um pad sold around that and that's that's pretty good um 
but I could be doing way more. I just know I could be, right? Like, it just depends on the content I've made, if I made more mousepad content that month or not. Um, more eyes on the product more be uh, equals more better, right? It's just how it is. Um, but, and and again, and I want the viewers that are listening to, to think about 100K in a business is not that much. Mm -hmm. It seems like a lot from, from a content creator's pr perspective. And the 13K on Twitch is a lot. Okay, don't even run. That's a lot for Twitch. Um, but that kid just did a lot for me. So don't get me wrong. That's not I, and again I don't really like talking money on on my stream because people like to assume I'm just rich and silly mm -hmm. um, But the, a lot of the money that I made then went to content creators and it went to um, It went to giveaways back to my to my viewers. I, I did a fuck ton of mousepad giveaways during then um, um, I just kept giving away mousepads because I was like, you know, it's like it's how it is. It's just gonna keep going um, yeah. And then with TikTok, like, TikTok's kind of what kicked it all off. You know what I mean? Obviously, TikTok is still in a gold rush state. It's just how do you keep going? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just, it's one of those things. Like, I've accomplished a lot at 22 now, now that I'm 22. Um, But I feel like my, my accomplishments now are minor to what I'm going to accomplish in the next 10 years. Yeah. And, um... You know what I mean? I just feel like at some point we're going to get to, you know, 20,000 orders and some point we're going to get to, you know, even higher and someday we're going to get bigger. We're going to get even bigger on YouTube and, you know, take over. You know what I mean? And um, it's all a matter of time before I find out my niche and what exactly what I'm doing. And then I'm there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, um. But yeah, if you have any more questions about the mouse pads and stuff, you're more than welcome to ask. I know that was a kind of a dawning question. A lot of people don't answer that, <laughs> um, but I, I'm willing to share it because I feel like people will instantly think I'm rich. But in a business aspect, that's a good profit for the business. But again, you know, there's a lot that goes into that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And a lot of investments made and and stuff like that. Yeah. No, I think I think I'm good. I'm also v extremely hungry right now, so I'm I'm gonna go grab some food after this. Um, yeah, me too. I agree <laughs> with that. I'm hungry uh, too. Yeah. But I I appreciate you coming on and talking. Uh, it's always a pleasure. I think you're you're a very genuine guy, and I, I love I, I appreciate all the support that you have given me over the past uh, year on coming on my podcast and you know commenting on my tiktoks every once in a while and, and showing me some love yeah. and i appreciate that yeah i guess I, I yeah again it's like it's great that i feel like podcasts are a really slept on thing and i i would love to start one at some point um you know i i've been thinking about doing that um at some point um you know doing my own kind of thing too um but you know i, I definitely love just just chatting shit with people i just think mm -hmm. it's like it's a really relatable thing when you hear like someone you watch talk about like their struggles and stuff like that. And, um, I really find it interesting, interesting, um, in total. Like I just, I just really find it interesting. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. Well, especially uh, when I heard about you talking to tens and Kaide, like that's crazy. <laughs> like that's a big one. I don't even know how you landed that. That's awesome. Uh, I mean, I, I can I can give a brief if you actually do want to hear how I landed it. I do, uh, do want to hear a little bit. Yeah, it's interesting. Well, so I did my most I don't uh, my most viewed video is um it's like I talked to six silent voice actors or whatever like that. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Um and one day uh and I love telling this to content creators because I feel like a lot of people understand how how much of a like just rarity this is that yeah. i was i was it was 4 a.m and i got on my tiktok and when you know when your notifications are going quick and you refresh and it only says like one or two people who like a video and then it says like in ninety one thousand others or something like that you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. the the one i refreshed it and it said kai day liked your video and it had the blue check mark and i was like wait what and so like That's I went crazy. back and I and it went away because my notifications were going so fast. So I did like what video would she like? And I finally found it. And then I went into her Twitch chat and I was like, hey, Kaide, I saw that you liked my video on TikTok. Uh, would you like yeah. to come on my podcast? And she said, absolutely. And 
and as it got closer she was like I i'm free next tuesday um do you mind out there just yeah. throwing shit away you're like yeah. all right tuesday is the day man. yeah i was like no one tell me to do anything i'm not doing anything but then she was like tyson's free as well and i was and i was like wait what and she's like yeah if you want him to come on and i was like what do you mean kaide if i want him to come on <laughs> Of course. of course yeah like we're about to break there's there's no one that has had kaide and tens on the podcast and that's for some odd reason that's me who is the only one who has had that happen to them so yeah i and, don't and know the, yeah and then he gave you a, a pretty insane compliment too i saw yeah. that that's crazy man i mean you that that alone should be some massive um you know some massive motivation for you i mean that means that you could get pretty much anyone you've gotten you could probably get shaz on you could probably get dapper on at that point i mean like you have a connection to one of the biggest valorant pros in in the entire world right now at your disposal like you know what yeah. i mean like mm -hmm. you you've got one of the biggest people that that liked your podcast right now like mm -hmm. one of the biggest mother motherfuckers on twitch um yep. and and um if i were you I would hey say hey you know I loved our podcast. Would you want to have like ye like maybe tens again, but like with Dapper or Shaz or somebody, mm -hmm. you know, and see if like they'll go on. I don't know, maybe they might, you know, because like Shaz would be a really per interesting person to bring on because Shaz like he has a really interesting personality when it comes to uh, like when it comes to Twitch and like pro. Like he like, he's like really funny, but he also like has a really interesting dynamic with his viewers you know mm -hmm. what i mean yeah um and that, I, that would be somebody i'd want to see on a podcast but um hey and if they need any mouse pads let me know <laughs> <laughs> you know like yeah, that's just how business you. works man. yeah i got you all right yeah that's how it is we're, so. we're gonna wrap this up uh all of aiden's links will be in the description as always make sure you guys check them out um and yeah thank you I, I appreciate you, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Peace. Alrighty.